push it right in hard you've got to push it <laughs> just, don't, <laughs> just don't break it phil apprentice plumber learns how a combi boiler works my name's alan hart and in today's video i've got a really special guest today i've got phil's back today um we did a video probably a year or so ago now what about a year ago phil yeah about a year ago um, and Phil Phil were trying to get a job to be an apprentice plumber and Phil managed to get a job to be an apprentice and now he works as an apprentice plumber but he wanted to learn a little bit more about boilers so he's come here today on his day off and on my day off and I'm just going to spend some time with Phil Phil's going to strip this boiler down he's going to take out all the components we're going to explain how some of them components work and hopefully if you're a trainee or if you're an apprentice or you're thinking of becoming a plumber or a trainee plumber then hopefully this video will help you because Phil can as he's taking stuff apart he can also ask us questions about it as well so and also if you've got any questions again put them below and, and I'd be really uh, be really helpful if you can put a thumbs up as well on the video because obviously it really helps with the videos so without further ado Let's uh, let's get over to Phil and we'll strip this boiler down. Some people ask about apprentices and how you can do really well. Well, Phil's here today in his own time. I'm in my own time as well, but he's in his own time. He's got a full-time job, but he's coming to learn more. If you've been watching my videos, Phil, You'll know what all these parts are in the spoiler, won't you? Yeah, I know some of them. Come on, man. tell me what they are. Heat exchanger. Well, that's burner, but heat exchanger's round bit of top. Round bit of top, yeah. You see this bit? Yeah. So this is heat exchanger. Yeah. That's your burner door. Yeah. What's this bit? Uh, it's is that the bit where I'll, uh, You've not been watching enough of my videos, I haven't, Phil. I haven't seen the boiler <laughs> I haven't seen the boiler one. So that's a fan? Yeah, the fan. What's this one? Oh, is that, is that an expansion vessel? Expansion vessel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What else have we got in here? What's this one? Uh, I don't know what that one is. What is it? So that's a pump or a circulator. Yeah, what's the purpose of it? So it pumps. We'll have a look on, on board in a minute, but yeah. it pumps water around the central heating system. Oh, that's a What's this one here? What's this? I it's a know. gas valve. Gas valve. So now when this goes on YouTube, you'll yeah. be able to watch this, I think. Ah, oh, I'm gonna know now what all these parts are. Yeah, I'll save the video. What's this one at back? We're gonna take all this out today, so you can tell me what every part is. That's a plate heat exchanger. That's the heat exchanger. It's the plate heat exchanger. Plate heat exchanger. And we'll talk about plate heat exchangers shortly. Yeah. What's this one? Diverter valve. So, so that's your diverter head. Yeah. And we'll talk about diverter head soon. We'll do we'll draw it on board and I'll show you what that means and what it does. So do you want to take some more out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can take these side panels off. Yeah. And then when I'm looking inside, just clip, unclip these pipes off on it, you see? Yeah. Just so it's all, this, it's been apart a, a few times, this boiler, to be fair. Set. Right, right, there was one in there. What? Cold water coming through in through there. No, cold water's your mains in there. Yeah. But this is your return, back from oh, central heating. Right, okay. yeah. So you, so your pipe, that comes in you return yeah. goes through here yeah and goes round obviously whichever circuit so go around heat exchanger uh -huh. and then this what you asked about this diverter valve yeah how this diverter valve works is it's got a um it's got like a paddle in there it's got like a, a, a thing that goes up and down which i'll show you later and it diverts it from if you want it in hot water mode uh -huh. it'll go around that plate heat exchanger uh -huh. so the water from the central heating if you want it in hot water it goes round the same yeah. thing. it goes round the plate mm -hmm. which then allows you to get hot water mm -hmm. which we'll, we'll talk about plates shortly and if you want it in heating 
it moves the position of it yeah. in this particular valve mm -hmm. and then it'll go around the heating circuit, so around your radiators. Mm -hmm. um, but on, this is this is like on a Worcester. Mm -hmm. And on the, how a Worcester one works, if you imagine imagine you've got a, you've got a pipe there or a T, mm -hmm. so a bit like when it says A and B with your bath. Mm -hmm. So it's, it works, still works in a similar way. So if you imagine that were Imagine your water were coming in there, yeah. and then this would decide which way it wanted to go. Okay. And this paddle here, this paddle moves. See, like it moves. Yeah. But it moves by this, this here. So we have a motor. That's the motor. So if you want it in hot water, mm -hmm. just put that on there. See that? I've got a paddle there. Yeah. So if you want it in hot water, it might paddle up like that. Uh -huh. And if you wanted it in heating, then this motor would move this paddle down. Yeah. So it close it off. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So, so so all you're doing is you're telling the boiler which you want, if you want central heating or hot water, and then that and then this will, will move where the water goes, yeah. rather it goes around the heating circuit or it goes round the the plate heat exchanger. Yeah. And then the plate heat exchanger, which will draw so it's easy to understand. But the water then goes around one side of plate heat exchanger. So the central heating part of the water is sealed. Yeah. You know, there's no, don't mix don't with anything. Mix, yeah. It only diverts with, cool. with a diverter valve. That's all it does. And then you've got your cold water comes in from your mains, from, yeah. your, from your street. Yeah. That goes into your plate heat exchanger. Yeah. Goes across your plate heat exchanger. And then it comes out the other side to go to your hot tap. So all it's right. really, really easy. So if you imagine, if you imagine inside your coil yeah. on your in, inside your hot water cylinder yeah. and you've got that coil yeah, yeah yeah so it works a bit like that you can't have the water mixing so this the plate heat exchanger you've got different plates like this uh -huh. so one side of that plate is central heating water yeah one side of the plate is your tap water yeah. is your cold mains coming in yeah and then the heat from the central heating part of it yeah transfers the heat from one to another right so does does that make sense yeah yeah yeah. so yeah. then what you're trying to do is you want you want the heating water to warm the the tap water yeah so that you get hot water coming out of your tap yeah but this is when it's really important that you flush the system correctly because what happens then is the water from the central heating will block the plate heat exchanger up <laughs> and that's why people have problems with you're right joanne we're just filming it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Morning, Joanne. Morning. Do it every time. <laughs> it's all right. So just to recap on this, Phil, um, I'll just try to draw it on here. So if you imagine your flow coming in to this, whichever way it's piped, the, the diverter could be on flow, it could be on return. Depends on boilers, really. For this scenario, we're going to say it's on the flow just to make it easy for you to understand. Imagine your flow coming in and then you've got in, got this paddle. So this is the Worcester one. We'll have a look at the, the Baxi one in a few minutes. But this is the Worcester one. I'll just take this diverter motor off so I can move it about. But then this will move to whichever one you want it to move to. So yeah, you run a hot tap. It'll, it'll move this paddle here. And it'll block off the heating so that's what it's going to do so it'll block off the heating and it'll let the flow go around the plate heat exchanger which then obviously transfers and it'll allow you to get hot water if you want heating then this this paddle will move and it'll block off the plate part of it and it'll allow it to go around heating so that's just gives you a little basic understanding of of how that's going to work and how it's going to control uh, with the boiler what we'll do now we'll have a look at the backsy diverter cartridge or the um yeah the cartridge i'll just show you show you that now so at the moment this is in the hot water position the pin in it is pushed out now what we'll do is i'm going to put some power onto here and that's going to show us that now we're asking for it to go into heating I'll just show you what happens to the valve. I don't know if you could just see the valve there. So the valve has just moved. And now I'll show you. So this will stay in its last position. 
but now I'll show you if we want to put it back into hot water what happens so now we're going to make it look like we want it to go back into the hot water position so if we just check that valve And just to understand that one, imagine that with the flow coming in on the middle of that valve. And as that pin lift up and down, it opens one part that goes to heating and it opens the other part that goes to plate. And just one thing to point out, you cannot have both of these on at the same time. So with a combi boiler, you either have heating or you have hot water. Sometimes if you have a problem, if you've got mucking system, these might not close correctly. And it could pass so you could get hot hot radiators etc when when uh, when you run a hot tap so what is it then phil it's a trap oh danny <laughs> i told you what it is once haven't i you have so trap. what is it so now you don't know you don't know what it is so what do you do go have a look in the book what do you do you, what do you, do? you don't book. know so what do you do you find out yeah, yeah, yeah always find out look in your installation instructions if you if you don't know if it doesn't tell you in there Phone your manufacturers, always find out, never guess, find out. I found out what that is, it's the condensate trap. Well done. Now what, what we're checking out next? Uh, Should we check out the expansion vessel next? Yeah, yeah, we'll go with If that. we have a look at the instructions, yeah, it'll, tell, it'll tell you how to check it out, right? Yeah, let's have a look. No, so what does it show you on picture in the installation instructions? Where's the securing clip? What, what pipe is it that you've got to remove? The, is it the braided hose, that one? The braided hose, where's that on it? Here. Right, so that's up bottom. Yeah. And it says about a clip, doesn't it? So where's clip? Uh. I think somebody's lost that clip out of it, haven't they? Good luck of it. It has, oh no, it's still, is it still there? I think so. Yeah, oh, so. I don't know if it is or not. So we've got Phil. Phil's is watching so about expansion we'll vessels. Off. Oh, we've got an expansion vessel. The reason behind an expansion vessel, when you heat water up, that water expands. It expands four percent. Expands four percent. So what does that expansion vessel do then now? So the expansion vessel, um, well, it facilitates the four percent um, growth of water when it's when it's heated. Right. Okay. So what happens if that expansion vessel failed or it was flat or it won't working? It what? could it could blow fittings off. Um, there'd be a lot of pressure in the system, so it may it may uh, spoil the boiler. Um, so what 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 would we do? What do we have to do? So what safety valve would we have in a boiler? PRV, pressure relief valve. Pressure relief valve. So where's that in boiler? Uh, Want to show me in boiler where that is? Yeah, it's just here. So what 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 does that pressure relief valve do? It, I think does it open up so that it releases some pressure? But is it is it something to do with the overflow or not? Yeah. So that pipe that you have outside, that copper pipe yeah. that you have outside. Yeah. If that would that would drip out of there. Yeah. So if there were too much pressure in, that would be your safety valve, mm -hmm. and it it stop stop the boiler from getting damaged. Yeah. 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 Spot on. Right then, Phil, I need to take out the low pressure cut off switch. So I've just let, I've just been letting Phil watch Roy's video on, on YouTube so that he can see which parts is. So, whereabouts is that in there, Phil? It's just here. So, how do we take that out? Uh, I've just got some wires on there, look. I'm not going to take them off, but I'll let you do them. Take them two wires off. Yeah. And then that there. That will unscrew out, mm -hmm. but you need to be gentle, just because it's it's like a plasticky thing. So if you were like brutal with that, you might just snap it. Obviously, this boilers there's no water in it, so mm -hmm. we're not bothered, and it's been stripped down loads of times. But yeah, so that'll just undo like this. Look, cool. so I'll let it take them off. What does it tell you on it? Have a look, have a look in there, which one does it look like in book? So just remember, if you go to a job, it could be any boiler, you'd need to know how to find out this information. So yeah. that this might be what you're gonna to have to change. So if you can find out in manuals, 
then it's the best training you'll ever get to be honest. Hydraulic pressure switch. Right, okay. So that's this this here. And what does this do? So we've looked in the installation instructions and it's just there. So what 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 does that do? What do we think that does, Phil? So it acts, it acts as a cut off when the pressure gets too high. Too low, yeah. Too low. So yeah. if there's no pressure in the boiler, then it would cut the boiler off, so the boiler won't work. So when we get a fault, sometimes it might be on a back seat, it could be an E118, or it could be an E119 on some of the models. And then what? That's what the fault code would be. And then what would you need to do then, if you get them fault codes? What do you normally do? Refer to the book. No, so what you'd do is you'd top the boiler up. Yeah. So you would refer to the book, yeah? And in the book, even on the pull-down flap as well, on some of them, it'll tell you what that is. But yeah, always just read the installation instructions. Yeah, so when that's on there, that's sucking your air in, mm -hmm. and it's sucking it in there, like a system before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's sucking air in. And what's happening is, this is still like a balanced chamber, really. And it's bringing the air in from the outside, so when you have a look in the flue, the flue's two sorts of flue in it. It's got like a, it's got the uh, combustion gases goes out of the center, but the air comes in on, on the outside. Yes. So the air comes in into here, it gets sucked in via that, sucked in via there, yeah. down there, into the fan. Yeah. And then that fan then mixes the in here, it mixes with the gas, goes through there and into the burner. And then the flue gases then go out, back through there, and out the middle. So it's still like a balance. So like old school boilers where there were balanced flue, yeah. it still sort of works like that. Mm -hmm. Because the air that comes in, the clean air from the outside comes in, yeah. goes through this circuit, mm -hmm. through here, burns, mm -hmm. and then the used air, if you like, goes then goes back out. There's flue gases mm -hmm. to outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm. Makes sense. So what we're taking out next? What do you think? I think we should take this out. What's this called? Uh, the heat exchanger. So this part of it's the That's heat the exchanger. exchanger. What's heat. this what's this part of it? So what we'll do, we'll have a look at the installation you instructions. Me, you told me. I well. did tell you, I did you tell, tell you. Me, you forgot, well. haven't you? Oh, is it some plate? What? So it's burner door. burner door. I call it burner door. Yeah. But I will look at installation instructions yeah. because different people use different terminologies. Yeah. Um, and in my videos, people pick up stuff with me and say, "Well, you don't call it that." Well, yeah. I called it for thirty years. Mm -hmm. so, you know, some sometimes things change and people call things different. But yeah. I will look at installation instructions, and then what you can do is from day one now, can you can it. learn it the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's oh. get the instructions back out. On the instructions, it's described as the burner door. So that we got there in the end. <laughs> right. So we're doing this now, then, Phil. Yeah. We're gonna take this burner door out. Yeah. We'll take it out. Can you explain what you've got there now? Watch some wires on it. Yeah. So I've got a burner door. Turn it round to the camera so the camera can see. Yeah. Got a burner door, um, and this is the burner. That's the burner. What's that black thing then, right outside? See this? Is it like a washer? It is. A, yeah, yeah. It's a washer. It's called a burner seal. Burner seal. But we can have a look at the instructions, can't we? Yeah. You can see what that is. <laughs> um, and then what else have you got in your hand? The fan. You've got the fan. What yeah. does? It, so how does that work? Can you explain to me how that works? Yeah. So it sucks air in. Yeah. And then it goes into the gas. Uh, so it mixes with the gas. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously it comes back up and goes into the burner. Goes out of the burner. And yeah. And there's an ignition switch here. Yeah. Which burns it, obviously. To which lights it. Yeah. yeah. To, to make the heat. Yeah. And obviously when water comes through, it goes round in that circuit. Yeah. So, so the so the flu so the heat the burner this lights, and then this this heat exchanger here. Yeah. This has got water in. Yeah. So this is in there, uh -huh. and the heat, so the heat transfers, and the heat, it has to go through these gaps, because these gaps are where, where the flue is here, look. Yeah. So it can't, 
it can't not go through. So then what that does is the heat from this burner transfer, transfers into these pipes. And in these pipes is the water from the central heating. So this pipe here is the flow to the radiators and this is the return. So this wet pump is here. You've got your return coming back from your radiators and it's going, pump, the pump's pump, pumping it, pumps up, up this pipe here, through there. Yeah. And then it goes round this heat exchanger. If you imagine one continuous coil, yeah. and then it comes back out this side, yeah. and then this side then goes to the radiators. Yeah. And, and then that diverter there decides whether it's gonna whether it's gonna go to radiators or whether it's gonna go to hot water. Yeah. So if it's gonna go to hot water, yeah, then this would this would change the position uh -huh. and it would go around then the plate heat exchanger. But as I said, we'll draw that out shortly and we'll, we'll get a plate heat exchanger, we'll cut it up uh -huh. and I'll show you the insides of the plate. Yeah. So you can see how a plate heat exchanger works. All right. Yeah. So now let's take out. We'll take out that diverter now. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Right then, Phil. What we're doing now? So we're taking out um, the uh, diverter. Is it mo what is it? Diverter motor. Diverter motor. Yeah. yeah. So how do we do that? So you've, lo you've looked in insta installation, installation instructions. instructions. Yeah. So we take this multi-pin plug thing out. Yeah. Um, like so. Yeah. And you pull the little yeah so you've got a clip there, underneath and then it just comes out like that and what does that do what does this do yeah so it's got like a, a system that it moves up and down that one yeah so inside there if you have a look have a look in the middle of it yeah can you see what it's got in there yeah like a pin it's got a thing there it's yeah. got a motor yeah and what that motor does is that winds out and it pushes that pin down in that there. Thing. Yeah. And that's how it diverts the thing. Yeah. The water. Aye. So what are you gonna do now, Phil? Refer to the book. And what what are you doing though? I'm what taking you... out the uh, heat plate exchanger. The plate heat, plate heat exchanger, exchanger. Yeah. Which is just in here. And if we have a look on the plate heat exchanger, it's just got a screw on this side. And then it's got a screw under here on this side which is a little bit hard to see with the camera but it's just right at the back there when we take the plate out obviously there might be water in if it's on a you drain up boiler down if it were a live boiler obviously this is uh, this boiler is not piped up and you'd also make sure that you don't lose the seals out of it as well so what I'm doing with Phil I'm making him read instructions for everything that we're doing because I think, my belief is that I'm not going to be here to help them all the time. So if, if I get Phil to read instructions, Phil has now got the knowledge to do this when I'm not with him. So I think it's the best learning technique. What do you think, Phil? I agree. It gives me my own uh, responsibilities and also my own independence as well. So it helps out. How are you doing? Going good. Just... Uh, Looking for it. So Phil's just taking out the plate heat exchanger now. So we've just got one screw on this side. Yep. And then the screw on the other side. And then Phil's going to explain how a plate heat exchanger works, aren't you Phil? Yep. Right then Phil, do you want to explain how that works? So water comes through, uh, both cold water and sort of central heating water can go through. Yeah. They work, they sit on top of each other, the, the, the pipes, is it? Or right. Is it? So when both of them get hot, the heat is sort of exchanged between them in a way. So it's transferred through con it's conduction in it. So it's transferring the heat from one plate to, to another. Yeah. Yeah. It goes through. So I'll tell you what we'll do now. We'll cut this up. Yeah. Yeah. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so a little bit like Blue Peter. Blue Peter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we've got us plates inside there. So yeah. if we have a look at the plates, yeah. and we'll zoom into these in, in, in a minute. Yeah. But if you have a look now, does, now can you understand better how that plate works? So if you see, you see these little lines on here? Yeah. These are the plates on top of each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if you imagine plates like sat on your kitchen rack at home, all your plates, yeah. this is what it is. 
One side's heating water. Yeah. One side's tap water. Yeah. One side's heating water. One side's tap water. And then it's transferring the heat Between. from the heating water yeah. to the tap water, but without it touching each other. Yeah. So obviously you wouldn't want to open your tap for yeah. you know run your run your bath and you've got central heating water in there. Yeah. You wouldn't want black sludge in there. You wouldn't want water to muck it before you've even had a bath, would you? No. You know what I mean? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so. But what we'll do, we'll do a little drawing on board, yeah. and we'll just try and explain this a little bit in a bit more detail. Yeah, yeah cool, cool, that's perfect. So if we have a look on this plate here, we'll try and understand what's going on. So from the bottom here, underneath, underneath here, we have this cold water, and the cold water comes in, and it comes into this plate, comes into the bottom of this plate, down here and then it comes along and it comes out of the bottom of the plate here goes through this and it goes through there and, and it goes out to the tap and on the central heating side it's coming down this pipe and the diverter valves changing where it goes and then when we look inside we can actually see the opening just there if you can see it's got an opening just there and then that goes through into this plate so this side of this plate is the hot hottest part of the plate on the central heating floor and it goes through here loses its heat because it's transferring into this and then it goes back into the return here and then back round and then back round the heating circuit for that and then what it's done there is the cold water's come in so so say for instance this temperature here on the central heating part of it say the central heating part of it there say that this were 80 degrees it'd go down here it'd lose its temperature through here and then it'd go back to the boiler the cold water's coming in here so the coldest part and the coldest part are on the same side so the cold water is going across here this is getting warmer now because it's going through this plate and it comes across here and it goes to the, this side and then this then would go to the hot tap so that's how you would get the hot water does that make sense so makes plenty of sense so now on the board i'm going to let you draw and tell me what's going on yeah cool so Phil's just going to explain what's going on now with this heat exchanger. So, what so you do, what's happening there then, Phil? So the cold mains goes in. Yeah. Um, it comes out across, and obviously based on the heat that it's receiving from obviously the flow pipe and the conduction of heat, it comes, it becomes hotter and hotter. And yeah. Obviously, once that it gets to the point where it's supposed to go, it comes out of the hot taps. Yeah, that's right. So then the top line, the floor, if you the, go to the floor. The floor, when that comes so in, that, that's, that's going to start hottest, isn't it? It's hottest. Yeah. And then it gets colder. So, yeah, keep going hot, 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 hot. And then that will still be a little bit warm when it goes back to heating. But this is just, just a good example to show you how. Yeah. So then that now is going back on your return, return. on your heating. And they're, they're never mixing. Yeah. So again, if we look at the lift one of them plates up, just point one of them plates, just at camera, just here if you can, bring it closer. So that's your plates. So the plates mean that it doesn't mix. If you've got any questions, then please ask them in the comments below. But that's that's sort of how the uh, plate heat exchanger works. I hope we've explained that enough for you. So just to point out, I'm not a trainer. I'm just trying to give, um, just trying to help best I can, share what the way I understand things. So just to recap on this, what you've got, you've got your flow coming down from your heat, from your main heat exchanger. It comes down to your diverter. So your diverter here. This diverter goes into the position that it needs to do which on this one, if we move this one down, I, I don't, I can't remember which way, that, which way valve goes, but let's say for this example, pushing the pin in sends it round the 
hot water circuit or the the plate heat exchanger circuit if we if we say that it then goes through goes into the heat exchanger the plate heat exchanger and it does exactly what phil said it starts to transfer the heat it comes into the plate heat exchanger warm comes across it's losing its heat because it's transferring it to the cold mains that's coming in which obviously then takes it to the tap as hot water so it's going cold now and then it goes back on the return to the main heat exchanger the main heat exchanger does its job again it's continuously heating this water and it's circulating around here so if you imagine that side of it is just like one circuit just circulating when it's doing hot water and then the the cold the cold comes in and again you've got your cold from your cold mains it's going through this plate heat exchanger and then it comes out of your hot tap problems that you could have is if the system's not been installed very well if the system's not been flushed on a on a fairly new boiler you can have a problem with hot water not working very well and what happens is on the plate heat exchangers these plate heat exchangers if you have a look in there you can see how small how small them plates are and then they get blocked so it's really really important that when you have a new boiler you have it installed flushed have it uh, installed correctly and flushed well and and then you don't you won't have the issues then but what tends to happen is i've seen a one of, one of guys on one of the groups saying oh i've installed like six boilers and the rubbish these boilers the hot water don't work after about three or four months to me that is alarm bells it tells me that the systems are not being flushed and that's why it's doing that so most of the time i in my opinion i would say it's installers fault this no hot water etc not a manufacturer's fault because there's not much that can go wrong with a plate heat exchanger apart from it not being flushed correctly to start with you could have in in some areas not in yorkshire but in some areas you can have scale and that could that could um that could block the plate as well but that would be you can put a scale reducer on to hopefully help and, and avoid that we don't really have that problem here i hope i've explained that um as well as i can really but if you do have any questions on that then please ask below what we'll do now we'll go back over to phil and Phil's going to, uh, I don't know what we're going to do next, Phil. What are we going to do next, Phil? Take some more bits out, I think. Take some more bits out of this boiler? Yeah, why not? Why not? So let's let's get back to Phil. <laughs> right, so Phil's going to just um, do a recap for us now and explain how this plate heat exchanger works. Right, yeah, so here we have uh, the plate heat exchanger. Um, I'll start with cold water. Cold water comes in, um, well, just around here. It just underneath, yeah. Just underneath. You can't see that on camera. Yeah, it goes straight across, um, but at the same time as that's happening, we've got a flow pipe which takes the hot water through, and it conducts the heat from that. Right. Okay. So before I that, how does it know that oh. it wants hot water? So there's a, a diverter motor yeah. on top of here, yeah. Which, uh, depending on the demand, sort of pushes down on a pin, yeah. And that pin decides whether it lets um, the heating water in or it goes towards the rads yeah so what we could do we could say that the diverter valve changes it from the plate to the heating yeah. so it the plate would be for your hot water yeah so and the if the pin was in the other direction it would send it around the heating circuit yeah 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 um and the bit i sort of struggle with most obviously before then is i didn't understand which side they went in so there's a well, Alan showed you earlier, there's like um, a little sort of gap here where it goes through into the top, where the hot water would go in, it would travel across, and obviously as it's going across, it's getting colder because of the contact with the cold mains. It'd go through um, this part here, and it would come out of the heat in return. Yeah, so it'd go back to the return. So that that's yeah. then like a loop. Yeah. So as we drew on the, on the board, um, so do you understand that better now? Does that give you a bit better understanding? Yeah, yeah. The, the main thing I struggled with was just understanding where it came in and came out, because obviously I don't usually work with boilers, but obviously it's changed a lot now, because I managed to see where it comes in and how they don't mix as well. That was the most important thing. And now that's sort of been clarified in terms of where it goes. I'm happy with that. 
Right, okay. So what, what do you want to take out next then? Should we take out, should we take pump out now? Let's take the pump out. Not gonna ask any questions, straight to the book. Good man. What are you doing then now, Phil? Um, I've just taken the screws out and I'm just removing the pump, um, the pump head. Right, okay. So if we have a look at that pump, just turn it around there. Yep. This is a ERP pump, so it's an ed energy saving, high efficiency pump. And if we just have a look on there, it's got two connections on there and one is for the mains power and one is low voltage and it adjusts the speed but if we have a look on that other video that we did with Roy he explains that in more detail so we've took the pump out now we've took the four screws out yeah and that's what the back of the pump body looks like right then Phil so what I want you to do now yeah I just want you to get this to turn uh -huh. so can you turn that show us how to do it without touching it is it in back through here yes yeah, so you've got a little you've got a little screw hole just take a screwdriver out a minute you've got a little screw hole in there don't know if you can see that a bit hard to see on camera push it push it in harder oh so as you push it in harder then you can turn it push it right in hard you've got to push it <laughs> <laughs> just, don't, <laughs> just don't break it, Phil. Oh. <laughs> what you do, what are you done to us, pump? I pushed it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so where you push it hard, yeah. uh, but not that hard. Yeah. It'd be all right if I get you to come and do some breaking up, won't it? <laughs> Say, Alan, I've knocked house down. <laughs> <laughs> So you see, as you're pushing it now, it turns. If you push it a little bit harder, and then as you're turning it, push it, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared to push it out again. <laughs> so that's what it, the inside of the pump looks like. Have a look at the other side of it as well. The, the one in your hand, other hand. Yeah. Yeah. So we just have a look at that. And all that does, it's on a little tiny impeller there. And all that does is it just circulates the water. So when we have a look in there, if you have a look, it's very small, it just circulates, it just circulates the water in the back of there. And I've dropped it on floor now, Phil. Yep, that's two of us now. So what are you doing now then, Phil? Um, I've taken some screws out of the bottom. I'm just uh, taking the gas valve out. So there were two screws underneath on that to lift the gas valve out. Yeah. And and what what's a gas valve? What does it do? So basically, it puts the gas through into the fan so it can mix with water. Not mix with water. Oh, sorry. Mix with water. Mix with uh, air. Unless you've piped it wrong. So some <laughs> <laughs> some people might pipe water to gas. Yeah. Um, and then you might get water going through. We've seen that on one of those videos. But normally, you've got gas going through your gas valve. And then it goes to your fan and your fans bringing air in as well and it's mixing and then that then goes through to the burner yeah so you've got your gas valve yeah so that's your gas valve on this one and that's this little thing that we just dropped on the floor so we have a look on there and we can see what type of gas valve it is so what we want to know now, Phil, this red thing. Yeah. What is it and what's it called? So if you have a look in installation instructions and then you can tell us. It's a Hall Effect Sensor. Hall Effect Sensor. So show me installation instructions. Where it is, where is it? It's just there, but it's not. It's there. Yeah. And then if we go back to parts, show us parts. So these, these are, these are everything, these installation instructions. These tell us everything we need to know normally. So N and N on there is Hall Effect Sensor and then it also tells us a part number on there. Sorry for flashing on that, it's uh, not very good lighting in here. So that's the Hall Effect Sensor there. And to take this off, if we just push it, it doesn't come off. But if we twist it round, it has like a little lip and you can get it to come out like that. So it's you just need to be a little bit gentle with them and you can test these to see if they're working correctly and we did do a video on testing them 
so if you if you want to know about that then just ask below and i'll put a link to the video of testing these so you're just going to remove auto air vent now yeah yeah so which one's auto air vent on this this one here yeah so you're going to take that pin out that metal yeah pull it out yeah take it out yeah and then don't pull it from that bit just uh you might you might want to just get like a little flat screwdriver mm -hmm. on there mm -hmm. and just see if you can prise it out a little tiny bit if not just get some grips on just need to be a little bit gentle with it that's all okay so what are you doing now then phil so i'm just unscrewing uh, the pressure relief valve yeah so prv pressure relief valve and um, what is it what does it do so basically when pressure builds up in the system it tries to pop like its name it relieves it so it sends it out a blow off what could be common causes that, that you'd have water coming out of that? Uh, blockages. Well, no, so so if, if the expansion vessel wasn't working yeah. and the pressure's gone too high, so say for instance the heating was at one bar, yeah. but the, there's no way for it to expand, then then we know that it would, um, water as it gets hot expands and it would have nowhere to expand, so the pressure would go up and it would then come out of the PRV. What other reasons? How else do you think that it could happen? Um, what could a customer do to to affect this and maybe cause a problem with their with their own heating? With their own heating, what could they do? Uh, switch something off, like a switch up. So what they could do sometimes a customer would want to fill the pressure up. Yeah. So what they might do is they might leave the filling loop left open. So if the filling loop was left open again it could also make the um, the pressure go too high and it could come out of the the pressure relief valve so sometimes what you might get you might get a customer phone you up and they might say my boiler's banging it's going boom, 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 boom. and what's it what what it's doing is it's it's going up to three bar because they've left the filling loop open and then the pressure the uh, pressure relief valve is opening it's letting the pressure go out then it's closing again and then because the pressure's continually rising because they've left the filling loop open, it then open again. But because it's doing it quickly, that's where you get that like hammer effect because it's opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, closing. So it's going up to three, dropping a little bit because it's opened, shutting, opening again, shutting, and then you wear that boom, 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 boom. So that's another, another thing. And what other problems, what other reasons could it be dripping outside? Why else could it water come out? Uh... So, so another reason could be, if if um, if it's opened in the past slightly, yeah. then it can start dripping, and sometimes it won't reseat. So if it gets muck on the seat of the rubber inside, do you want to just show that to camera? Yeah. Just go. Yeah. So if it gets muck on that seat in there, then often it won't close. So then once it once it once it's open, if it gets a bit of muck on there, then it doesn't close properly. So that then can also allow it to drip outside, which that might be a problem where a customer says, I've got to continually top the boiler pressure up. So that could be a reason for that as well. So yeah, so what we're doing next? We're getting close to that time now, aren't we? So we're... are you going to put it all back together soon? I think that time is coming. And am I going to just let you do that? And uh, you're going to show me how amazing you are now and how much you've learned today. We'll see, only time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's Phil, stripping boiler down. Hopefully we've explained a few bits on how a combi boiler works. We have done a, a really detailed video with Viva Training Academy, and that is how a combi boiler works. So if you search for gas training, how a combi boiler works, and then you'll see the video that I've done with Viva Training Academy, and that's with Roy, and Roy is an ex baxi trainer. So if you search out that video, he can he's a proper trainer so he can go into much more detail than i can because I, i'm not a trainer um but yeah what i'm going to do now i'm going to let phil put this back together um and then we'll probably have some final words from phil at the end so yeah let's get back over to phil <laughs> how are we doing then phil putting that back together good got everything back in um just put in the uh doors and stuff on now sides yeah sides and put the door back on and what have you learned today 
Absolutely everything any apprentice will want to learn. So what's that? Uh, Learn <laughs> how a boiler works. So now I don't call this the heat exchanger. Which, bit, which bit's the heat exchanger? This bit here. The outside bit, yeah? Yeah. What's the inside bit? Burner door. And that, what's inside that burner door? What joins onto it? The burner. Yes, yeah, so it's got burner on there, yeah. Yeah. So we've got a pump. Yeah. PRV. Yeah. Gas valve. Yeah. Heat uh, plate heat exchanger. Yeah. Uh, got the oh, what? Do, what do we call it? Diverter valve motor. Diverter head. Yeah. Yeah. Diverter head. Diverter um, motor in bottom. Yeah. Um, diverter. We, yeah. Diverter in bottom. Yeah. We've got. Obviously, it pump and everything, that's pretty much. Oh, this is the one I struggle with to begin with. Condensate trap. Condensate trap, which one's that? This one here. Yeah, and what else have we got? Where's fan? Fans here. Yeah, fans yeah, here. Where's um, auto air vent? Auto air vent is here. No, 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 no. No, that's not it. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's that one there at the back, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one with grill on. The one that I put in. No, yeah. This one there, like, there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, the one right, I just put in. Yeah. Right, right. What else? Pressure sensor. Uh, oh, pressure sensor. So yeah. That's Hall's effect sensor. That yeah, one. that one's Hall effect sensor. Yeah, that yeah. red one. What's this one? Pressure sensor. That's pressure sensor. Yeah. Yeah. Good okay. stuff. Yeah. You've done well, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. And do you yeah. know about how, how water side of it works now with plate heat exchangers? You've got some plates there on top. Yeah. Yeah. So I figured that out. I managed to learn that today as well. Um, how water comes in and goes out depending on whether it's in central heating system or it's coming straight in from a cold main so yeah so you're happy happy good day good, good day good. so we've had a great day today me and full it's uh yeah it's been a real good laugh it's also been good to see the journey that phil's that phil's made so phil for me and the first time he phoned me, I'd had loads of people phone me, ask me if they could come and, and work with me and if I could help them. And to be honest, I said no to him because I was just too busy. I had loads of people. And a few weeks later, he phoned me again. And, and this time I just thought, you know what? Yeah, you can. And the reason I did that was because he, he was trying, he was going that extra mile to try. And so what I'd say is if you are an apprentice or if you're somebody that that wants to become an apprentice or you want to be in this industry you can do it if you try so just try you know and if if you get rejections if people don't want to help then try somebody else and if not phone that person again that you phoned before just say to them say oh you know i know you said no before but i just thought i'd just try again you know see can i come and you know just try because with phil it actually worked and then phil came with me we did a few videos together with Phil and then Phil, I don't know if he managed to get the confidence or what happened, but after trying to get a job and not being able to get one, he managed to get one. And then a few months after that, probably about six months after that, Phil phoned me up really happy, telling me how, how happy he was and how his life's changed. And it, it really, really changed his life and that his mum was so happy. And, and for me, it was really, really good, it, touching, and Phil will always have a special place in in my heart because you know I feel that I really I helped him, uh, and it's brilliant, and and, I, and yeah, I think it's good. Um, so, like I say, never give up and and keep trying. There's always um, yeah, I'm babbling on, <laughs> babbling on as usual, um, but yeah, never give up, keep trying. If you've got any questions, please put them below. If you can put a thumbs up, I'd be very grateful. Um, and, and thanks for watching. Thank you.